Demetrius Andre said, what about Errol Spence Jr.? Hold up, we about to unpack this. Roll the intro. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live boxing ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Demetrius Andre calls out Errol Spence. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing if you want to become part of the gang gang. Notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. Get your Box Fan Expo tickets. Link is in the description. I'm an affiliate. It helps the channel. And it's going down. Middleweight division, Canelo versus Jacobs. Great unification. Speaking of the middleweight division, Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade went to the Clarissa Shields undisputed unification and reporters caught up with him. Link in the description. He said some interesting things. I want to talk about a particular aspect in a video interview I seen where he challenged Errol Spence Jr. I'm going to read direct quotes and then on my new series, Boxing Ego Unpacked, we're going to unpack this together. He says, the question was basically who would win, Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence? He says, I'm going to go with Terrence Crawford. They said any particular reason why you would go with Crawford over Spence. And he said, definitely because he can box, he can take a good shot, and he knows how to move in the ring. He moves real well, and he got good ring generalship. Then he starts kind of going to the Errol Spence, why he wouldn't pick him. And he says, with Errol... He's kind of a one-dimensional guy right now. He's relying on his power so much. It's kind of funny. You knock down Kell Brook, Chris Algieri, and a few other guys, but you don't knock down Mikey Garcia. That tells me that he's not the special fighter that we all thought he was. He goes on to say, Errol Spence wants to fight somebody two weight classes under him. Tell him to come up to 160 pounds. I'll put my belt on the line. Of course, I'm a champion. You know, Andre goes on to say, I can only get in the ring because the question is basically like, you know, people have nasal spray and need tune ups before they fight you and stuff like that. What gives when you're going to get the big opportunities? He says, I can only get in the ring with whoever's available and who wants to get it in. And the guys have to want to get in the ring with me. The guys that get it in are pretty much tough guys are pretty tough guys. Arthur Akov wasn't a pushover. He gave Billy Joe Saunders a hard fight, etc. He said, but Billy Joe Sanders, I was trying to make a fight with him. What did he do? He went up to 168, thought he was going to fight for a belt. Now look at him. Now it's unprofessional for me to even chase him because he's being unprofessional. I can name all these guys, but they've got to want to get in the ring with me too. And I'm going to stop right there because um, I really want to focus in on the call out and I guess the criticism or thoughts on Errol Spence. Let's unpack this. My personal opinion, I love De uh, Demetrius Andrade. I've been a, a fan of his fighting for some time. Right here, I can't agree with him. You know, I can't agree with him for a couple of reasons, and we're going to unpack this together. Um, I respect Demetrius Andrade. Met him, interviewed him, seen him fight. But you have to listen to what he just said. He just says... Mikey Garcia came up two weight classes and he makes it sound like it's a bad thing. And he's like, he's not the guy we thought he was, right? And then he challenges Errol Spence to come up from 147, where he currently fights, up two weight classes to 160. So if you're gonna criticize Mikey Garcia, like see, I know I know boxing, I know the setups, and you know, I report and cover this stuff. So Mikey Garcia called out Errol Spence. Errol Spence wasn't looking down. Errol Spence wasn't just bored, and he was like looking for someone to fight. And he 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 looked below him two divisions and said, "Hey, me, me, me," right? Mikey Garcia started name dropping, and people thought clout chasing Errol Spence. That's the reality of it. Because I I know um, some of the people who were on the initial podcast where this hall came out, where he first even mentioned Errol Spence's name really like for a public fight he says i want to fight three times this year this was last year i want to fight three times this year third one being errol spence 
and the the people on the podcast one of the the hosts said oh no i don't like that fight errol spence i don't like that for you and then shortly after that i talked to errol spence at the lotta edison de lotta versus swift jared Hurd fight he was in vegas and he said i'll fight whoever you know he said i don't you know i don't know what's up with mikey that type of thing so he didn't even really sound like he was taking it seriously but then obviously fox and premier boxing champs and al Heyman and stuff said hey he's really serious about fighting you he unified with um robert easter jr and you know he's he's checking for you is that a fight you're over to and then the rest is history but what andrade is doing is like i said mikey garcia called out errol spence jr and he just obliged him he's like okay mikey has a fan base you know i can't get sean porter and pacquiao and floyd's retired and that's my friend um, Keith Thurman's been injured in motorcycle accidents and car accidents and all this stuff. Fine, fuck it. I'll fight this guy that's called me out. But what Andre just did is he called out Errol Spence. He called him out. You know, so that's those are two different situations. And then, like I said, the the first part of it is it's almost like an oxymoron. How can you call out um, Errol Spence? Even though he got called out by Mikey, the smaller, the basically the smaller person was chasing the bigger person, not the other way around. Now the bigger person, Andre, who's been fighting at 160, moved up as a champion. There is calling out the guy who hasn't been fighting at 54, let alone 160, right? So that doesn't really make sense. Second of all, Andre's fighting on the zone. They have to, you know, just get their schedule right. So people want to even go to the app. So it doesn't really sound like a likely fight that I even see being made. So, you know, that brings up um, like kind of skepticism. So to me, I don't know. I haven't talked to Andre about this. I haven't talked to Spence or anybody surrounding this. But it seems like maybe there's more than meets the eye, you know, because obviously Errol Spence is friends with the Charlo He's a stable mate with one of the Charlos, Jamel, and there's a there's a tumultuous relationship between Andre and the Charlos. You know, in fact, Andre was supposed to fight um, Spence's stable mate, Jamel Charlo, at a point in time on Showtime. I think you know my memory, if memory serves correctly, and I have a pretty good memory, I believe is on the Miracon Devin Alexander card. They were supposed to have Jamel Charlo versus Andre on that. Andre pulled out. You know, the money wasn't right. He didn't like the setup. He had been fighting on HBO and he didn't want to go over to Showtime for that money or you were the money. There was some kind of wires crossed. So he pulled out of the fight and it never happened. So I don't know if there's some, you know, back and forth, but this is not the first time where Andre's kind of targeted Spence. So I really feel like I don't know, you know, I'm, I don't know everything that's said, but I can't really remember much that Spence said about Andre, but I could think of a couple of times like there was um, a video that came out and people were saying that Andre was accusing Spence of being on something like a PED. And then I remember there was, that was like a headline kind of thing. And then he came out and said, no, nah, I didn't say that. I didn't say it like that and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if he has a vendetta, vendetta against Errol Spence. I don't really know what's going on there. The only thing I could do from an outsider looking at it is connect the dots that they're both from Texas, you know, the Charlos and Errol Spence. And maybe because of that relationship, he's looking at them as the ops. You know, he's looking at Errol Spence as the op. But I can't, you know, I can't support this because it just doesn't make sense. Like I said, why would Errol Spence, he has man down promotion. He just beat Mikey. He's in negotiations to most likely fight Sean Porter. And he's at 47 where he has plenty of challenges. Why would he go up to fight 160? And even if he did go up to fight 160 at the zone, wouldn't he go up to fight Canelo? That would be like a bigger fight just off rip, you know, and that's something that De La Hoya has talked about. And he's Errol Spence himself has said he he wants to fight. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a personal thing with, with the two, but I, I don't like to call out me personally. I, I want to see a little bit more camaraderie with fellow Olympians. Andre's an Olympian that represented America. And so is Errol Spence. So maybe there were different years. But I, I don't know. It seems like you would have some more camaraderie. Like you see Errol Spence talk favorably about Andre Ward. But for whatever reason, Andre, he seems to, I don't want to say not like, but that's the, for lack of a better word, it seems like he has something against Errol Spence. That's what it looks like from the outside looking in. Again, I don't know 
personally what happened between the two or if something was said i don't have all those details only thing like i said i could think of is maybe the the relationship with spence and charlo or maybe spence says something i don't know but um i don't really like to call out and you definitely can't criticize someone for being called out and obliging that person and beating them and even the this is the other thing this like people andre knows boxing you know that's why it makes me feel this this is the thing there's a lot of fighters who are great fighters skilled fighters technical fighters but a person like me who's not even a pro fighter i can give better assessments than some boxers because you have in boxing you have to be totally receptive and open-minded and neutral and what i've seen is like you looked at the fox card Ray Mancini, he likes a certain style. Joe Goosen seems to favor a certain style and things like that. So you have people in the industry, trainers and fighters and stuff. And sometimes their breakdowns on boxing, to me, don't really make sense. And Andrade, I know he can box himself. He knows what to do in there. And he's a phenomenal fighter himself. But some of his assessment, it just seemed off to me. He says Errol is one dimensional. And he said he's relying on his power so much. And I feel like his last fight with Mikey that he referenced, the complete opposite was shown. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you wanted to say that, that's what everybody was saying before the Mikey Garcia fight. He relies on his power. And then Errol Spence showed different wrinkles in the Mikey Garcia fight. And then he's, Andrade in this interview was criticizing him for not getting out, getting Mikey out of there and getting the knockdown. So it, to me, that seemed a little bit jumbled. Like a lot of people were saying Errol Spence has no head movement. Errol Spence relies on power. But I, from what I seen, and I was at the fight, I seen an Errol Spence who outsmarted, outwitted, outboxed, outmaneuvered, and had a better strategy and made better adjustments than Mikey Garcia, AKA outboxed him. He still had power, but he didn't just rely on it. So I think that comment from Andre was way off the mark especially since you're criticizing Errol Spence for not getting him out of there. Had he just, you know, came reckless and rugged towards the end, he probably could have stopped Mikey Garcia. But I think he had respect for Mikey Garcia. And I'm not saying he didn't want to stop him, but he didn't want to at the cost of not pitching a shutout and fully dominating his opponent. Why take that unnecessary risk to, to you know, give a guy the only thing he's looking for? which is a home run shot that can change things around when you're destroying them. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like the whole, it seems personal between Android and Errol. And I'm not trying to stir the pot or anything, but the assessment seemed off. And then the other thing that didn't really make sense to me, new media, is Andre says he knocked down Kell Brook, but you couldn't knock down Mikey Garcia. So that just tells us he's not as special as we thought. But Kell Brook is bigger than Mikey Garcia. And he was coming from 160. So how does that prove he's not special when he knocked down someone who was, he knocked down and knocked out somebody who was even bigger than Mikey Garcia? You know, so I think that's kind of a testament to the durability and craftiness of Mikey Garcia. Like, it doesn't even make sense because Kell Brook is diesel. Like, he was in shape and he's bigger than Mikey. And you just reference how Errol Spence stopped him. And so is Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri is you know physically bigger than mikey garcia so you named people that are bigger than mikey that both got stopped so you can't really hold that against him because one guy who happens to be smaller happened to be durable and crafty enough to survive terence crawford errol spence me personally i don't know i love them both they're both great fighters i don't know who's gonna win but to say errol's one dimensional and then talk about how he didn't stop mikey garcia i think that that whole commentary seemed jumbled because if anything even if you thought Errol was one dimensional I feel like the Mikey Garcia he showed different shades of what he could do more of his arsenal and more wrinkles to what he can do so that the timing seems very poor for this comment I never thought Errol was one dimensional personally but some people did they say he has no defense he lacks head movement he just relies on power that's comments that i was reading that's what some people's commentary was suggesting but 
I don't see how you can have watched the Mikey Garcia fight and still say that. So maybe he didn't even watch the fight. I don't know. Because that was never... Uh, maybe he just watched the highlights. But I don't see how you can watch 12 rounds of that fight and then still say he's one-dimensional and he's just relying on power so much. So that seemed way off. And um, the thing is, you know, he's talking about Mikey didn't get... He didn't knock him out. I mean, not... He, like Andre himself didn't knock out Alantez Fox and you know even the Arthur Akov fight was the stoppage some people disputed so stuff like that doesn't matter you know you're not gonna be able to knock out Jack Kukle he was tough Dervinchenko or Andre did knock him out and then Andre won a split decision for him with him Walter Katendakwa had horrible pro level experience he had no world class experience and Andre didn't knock him out so you know me personally I can't agree with those types of comments those seem like you know just casual fan comments like oh you didn't knock him out Mikey's tough Mikey sparred Pacquiao Mikey sparred Edward Valero and he wasn't really even putting himself in a position to really turn the fight around he was kind of shelling up and moving out of the way his shots it's harder to knock out a guy like that so, you know, to me, I think that it seemed personal. The commentary seemed off the mark on this one for Andre. Um, we'll see. Maybe more comes out about this, but that's just my assessment. Boxing ego unpacked. I don't really want to see Demetrius Andre Errol Spence, at least right now, you know, just because it doesn't even make sense. I want to see Andre Triple G, Andre Canelo Jacobs winner. You know, Andre Billy Sh Billy Joe Saunders, if he comes back, those fights make sense. And leave, let Spence do what he needs to do with Sean Porter, Pacquiao, um, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Terrence Crawford. Those are the fights I want to see. You know, we got to get to the point where boxing is respectful and respecting the weight classes. People have been disrespecting the weight class. I don't want to keep seeing these radical weight jumps when people haven't even proved that they're the best in their own right, in their own current division. You know what I'm saying? You haven't even fought the other top guy in your own division. Why are you moving up two weight classes with no tune-ups? You know, it's just stuff like that. I think we have to get back to where we're respecting weight classes. Errol Spence in Andrade in the future? Yeah, that's cool. But I'd rather see the Charlos in Andrade. You know what I'm saying? They're closer in weight, both of them. One was supposed to already have fought in Android, you know, or fought Android. So I think weight classes need to be respected. Boxing Ego Unpacked, that's my thoughts. I want to give it to the fans. Pause. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.